Hey guys, welcome back to church. We have a lot to go through today and some really cool stories. First, we have a really odd story that I think you should hear. It starts out with the Israelites who just got out of Egypt. There's slavery in Egypt. It's a story about some people who were complaining about where they were and that they wished that they could be someplace else. Sound familiar? Now, the Israelites were enslaved in Egypt for hundreds of years, but God, through Moses, led them out of slavery and into freedom. Woo! We're free! <laughs> we're masters of our own house! That's right! No more cooking and cleaning no more! We're free! Free! <laughs> Why? You're not going to cook and clean no more? No. Now they may have been free from slavery, but they were chained to something else. Discontentment. We have to get out of this desert. I'm hungry. Yeah, I'm starting to think Egypt wasn't so bad. We may have been enslaved, but at least we had food. That's right. We might not have been able to go where we wanted to go or say what we wanted to say. Wear what we wanted to wear. We're 100% owned by somebody and forced to build big old buildings. But, but at, at least, least we, we had, had food. food. So the people complained to the man who had led them to freedom, Moses. And Moses took their complaints to God. I'm sure you know this, but everybody's hungry. They're afraid they're going to starve here in the desert. Tell them I will rain down bread from heaven, but only gather as much as you need. Really? You're going to make it rain bread? That's, that's pretty cool. I will send them bread in the mornings, but when the sun goes down, I will send meat. What? You're going to send bread and meat? <laughs> that's crazy. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. Yeah. Oh, you got that right. <laughs> so Moses told the people everything that God said to do. So at night, he's going to send meat. And in the mornings, he'll send bread. Yeah, I believe that when I see it. <laughs> yeah, like meat. It's just going to fall out of the sky. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. I'm not really a poultry fan. And a great flock of quail landed where they camped, and every Israelite ate as much as they could, till the next morning there was a heavy dew on the ground. Hey! What's that? What's what? That on the ground there. What is that? <laughs> no idea. That's called manna. It's the bread I told you God would send. What? <laughs> really? It can't send any multigrain down, can it? Now, just to be clear, the bread called manna didn't look like full loaves of sliced bread. But still, God sent them fresh manna every single morning. And yet, God continued to provide for them. But the problem is that the Israelites would still complain to Moses, this time about not having enough to drink. <laughs> I, I, oh, oh, I hate to bother you again, but these people are going to kill me if they don't get some water. Take the people to Mount Horeb and hit the giant rock there with your staff. Water will come out of it. What? It, you, you're going to make water come out of a rock? <laughs> I can't wait to see this. <laughs> so Moses took all the people and gathered them at Mount Horeb by a huge rock. What? You're gonna make water come out of that rock? <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see that. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Hallelujah. 
You can't make another flavour, can you? Yeah, this one has too much of a water flavour. <laughs> Enjoy. What? It's a little chalky. You don't have any of that glacier stuff, do you? That stuff is so tasty. They had it in Egypt. God continued to show his people after them and provide for them, although they continued to doubt him and they longed for the past. You see, it's hard to be content with what's happening right now. We're either looking backwards to the way things used to be, or we're looking forward to the way we think that they should be. When we do that, we miss out on what God is doing for us right here and now. And you know what? What he's doing right now is pretty great, actually. So what's going on in your life right now? I have another example for you, though, of someone who moved and who keeps looking at what happened in the past. Check out this story. Henley's family just had to move all the way across the country for her mom's job in the middle of the school year. And even though Henley's supposed to be writing a poem for language arts, all she can think is, I want to go home. And her dad reminds her, this is home now. And Henley's like, our real home is way better. And dad says, whining is not an art form. But Henley turns her complaints into a haiku. I hate this whole place. It stinks like my brother's socks. I want to go home. Dad tells her to focus on math. So Henley does numbers. The number of things she misses back home. Number one, it was warm all year long. But now she has to dress up like a polar bear to stay warm. Number two, in their old house, Henley had her own room. But now she has to share a room with my messy sister who just won an award for the most cluttered bedroom ever. Number three, lunch at Henley's old school was awesome, but here it's not so good. In fact, lunch is like a science experiment. Number four, Henley's old school was right down the street. Now they have to drive half an hour and get up way too early. Number five, at Henley's old home, the beach was just minutes away. Dad checks Henley's numbers and says her math is off because she's forgotten to add in all the good things she has now, like the beautiful fall leaves outside and the mountains for hiking. Henley's like, oh, and she thinks of other stuff she has now too, like how much fun it is to talk and giggle with her sister before they fall asleep and how there's a group of girls who always welcome her at their lunch table and how she and dad have a blast listening to polka music on the way to school. Henley looks at her list and realizes it all adds up and that her new home isn't so bad after all. Henley even suggests that she and dad go for a quick hike before dinner. So kids, never turn whining into an art form, but do always remember that contentment is learning to be okay with what you have. Now, Henley figured out what contentment was all about, but she had to stop and think about what was good in her life right now and stop thinking about the way that things should be or the way that they used to be. Do you find yourself complaining about what's happening around you? What in your life is good right now? That's the big point for today, is don't miss out on what you have now. So whether you've just moved, or you don't have the newest game, or you aren't the biggest fan of school, you can be content with what you do have by focusing on that instead. That's it for our story today. See you guys later.